friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Nestle Parasalai. So today we are going to study about the microbial control method. This will be very much helpful for those students who are preparing for GATE Excel, GATE BT, ICMR JRF and DBT JRF. So this is a classification of microbial uh, methods friends. So microbial methods are classified into based on physical agent, chemical agent and mechanical method. Okay, so physical agents are classified into heat and radiation and heats are classified into dry method of heat and moist method of heat. Okay, and in, under this dry heat, two methods are classified. One is called incineration, another one is called dry oven. And under this moist method, there are two methods. One is steam under pressure, that is your autoclaving. Another one is boiling water or pasteurization. Okay, so next method is radiation, which is also coming under this physical agent. And radiation are classified into ionizing radiation or non-ionizing radiation. So your X-ray, cathode, gamma ray will be coming under this ionization method. And your UV ray will be coming under non-ionizing method. Next is with regard to chemical methods. So chemical agents are classified into liquid and uh, gases and liquid. Okay. And the last method is your mechanical method. So mechanical removal method is nothing but it's a process of filtration. Okay. So you might be wondering here, you can able to see few methods are classified as sterilization, whereas few are classified as disinfection. This is based on whether the treatment, whether the treatment is killing the microorganism or whether they are removing the microorganism. So before entering into that, you should know about the terminologies. So first method is called as sterilization method. So sterilization is a process of a complete removal and destruction of all viable microorganisms. So it is a process by which a living organism, spores and acellular entities like virus, virions, virions, either they might be destroyed or they might be removed from an object or from a habitat. So the next method is with regard to disinfection. So disinfection is the destruction or removal of vegetative pathogen but not bacterial endospore. So the method of disinfection does not kill endospore. Okay. And next point is very important. A disinfectant does not necessarily sterilize the object because viable spores and few microorganisms may remain. So the next method is sanitization. So sanitization is nothing but is closely related to disinfection only. So in the process of sanitization, the microbial population will be reduced to a level that are considered as a public health standard. Okay, so it's a method of partial disinfection. Example is that in restaurants and all, utensils will be cleaned by a process called sanitization. So the next method is antisepsis. That is, these antiseptic is nothing but chemical which are applied to body surface in order to destroy or inhibit the growth of vegetative pathogens. It's called antisepsis. So what is mean by this chemotherapy? Chemotherapy is again chemical used to internally in order to kill. That is, these chemicals will be used internally in order to kill or inhibit the growth of microorganism within the host cell. So the next is regarding to terminology, okay, so substances which kill an organism is often having a suffix like side, that is germicide, which means germicide will be killing the organism, okay, and substances which don't kill the organism, but they do prevent the growth, okay, so substances which doesn't kill the organism, but they prevent the growth will have a suffix called static, that is example, bacteriostatic, and these substances, like the substances that do not kill, but they prevent the growth, these agent, if these agent are removed means in the growth of microorganism will be Resume. That's the example of this bacteriostatic or the substances that don't kill but prevent the growth will have a suffix called static. So the next is with regarding to condition which influences the which influences the effectiveness of antimicrobial agents. So these are the conditions that is influencing. So first is regarding to size of population. Next is with regarding to composition of population. So if you take bacterial endospores, they are more resistant to antimicrobial agent when you compare with vegetative form. Okay. And also younger cells are readily destroyed than a mature organism. And also some species will have the ability to withstand adverse condition. For example, if you take this mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis, it is much resistant to antimicrobial agents agent when you compare with other bacteria. So the next factor is with regarding to concentration or intensity of an antimicrobial agent. So more the concentration of a chemical agent or more intense of physical agent then rapidly microorganism will be destroyed. Whereas some agent is more effective at lower concentration. For example, if you take ethanol, 70% ethanol is 70% ethanol is more effective when you compare with 95% of ethanol because in 75% of ethanol there is a 70% of ethanol and remaining 30% is water. So that's why the 70% of ethanol is highest in activity because of the presence of much amount of water. Whereas if you take 95% of ethanol, it is made up of 95% of ethanol and only 5% of water. So that's why in laboratory, uh, laboratory center we generally use 70% of ethanol. Next factor is the duration of exposure. A longer a population is exposed to a microbial agent, the more organisms are killed. 
The last method is temperature. An increase in temperature at which a chemical react often enhances its activity. Okay, so for example, when you employ a lower concentration of disinfectant or sterilization agent, then you can employ higher temperature, which is efficient for killing microorganisms. So the next factor is with regarding to local environment. Okay, so the population of microorganisms which are going to be controlled or not in an isolated manner, they are surrounded by few environmental factors. This environmental factor might either provide protection to the microorganism or it might destruct or uh, kill the microorganism. Example of destruction is that if you take heat, heat kill more readily at acidic pH if the environment is acidic than the alkaline pH. Next example of protection, environment which protect the microorganism is like organic matter. So these organic matter generally protect the microorganism against heating and chemical disinfectants. So one such example is the biofilm. So biofilm is nothing but an organic material that is present in biofilm. Biofilm will be protecting the biofilm microorganism. And the biofilm and this microorganism are hard to remove. And also bacteria which are present in this biofilm community will be altered physiologically. So this makes them less susceptible to many antimicrobial agents. So many antimicrobial agents cannot able to kill or prevent the bacteria present in the biofilm. So the next is with regarding to we are going to study about first physical method then chemical method. So first method is heat. So heat is classified into moist heat and dry heat. So moist heat generally kills virus, bacteria and fungi and the mode of action is that it kills the microorganism either by degrading the nucleic acid or denaturating the enzymes or other essential protein. And this moist, moist heat generally disrupts the cellular membrane. Okay, and exposure to boiling water for 10 minutes is sufficient to kill both the vegetative cells and eukaryotic spore, but it is not enough to destroy the bacterial endospore. So, bacterial endospore, they may survive or hours of boiling. So, boiling or moist heat is not a correct method for destroying the bacterial endospore. Okay, so boiling is a method that can be used for disinfection, but boiling does not sterilize the particular chemical or particular area. So, boiling is an example of disinfection. So, the next is that... <coughs> In order to kill the bacterial endospore, moist heat sterilization must be carried at a temperature above 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, for achieving this particular thing, you need to employ saturated steam under pressure method. Okay, so this is nothing but steam sterilization method, friends. So steam sterilization is generally carried by an autoclave machine. This was founded by the Chamberlain. He was the one who found this particular thing. So in the autoclave, they'll be employing hot and saturated steam. Okay, so that will be continued to enter into the autoclaving chamber and the desired temperature is 121 degree celsius and the desired pressure is 15 pounds okay at this particular temperature like 121 degree celsius a saturated steam destroy all the vegetative cell as well as endospore okay for 10 minutes is sufficient but generally autoclave must be continued for 15 minutes in order to provide a marginal safety so the next this is an approximate uh, condition for moist heat healing for all organisms so if the yeast is in vegetative cell form then 5 minutes at 50 degree to 60 degrees enough but when a yeast is present in spore form the 5 minutes for the temperature should be increased same for bacteria molds and bacteria viruses i had given so please uh, have a look on this next thing is that so when a large volume of liquid must be sterilized, an extended sterilization time is needed because it takes a longer for the center of liquid to reach 121 degrees Celsius. Like if you are going to sterilize 5 liter of your liquid medium, then it requires about 17 minutes. Okay, so that's why they had employed a biological indicators. Okay, so in view of this potential, because if you want to sterilize 70 liters or like 5 liters of solution, so you, you, you are not sure whether the 5 liters of solution has been sterilized, 100% uh, sterilization is achieved or not. So in that case, they will be employed in this biological indicator okay so biological indicator is nothing but it's a microorganism which will be autoclave along with the other material like uh, it will be autoclave along with your media so indicator commonly consists of culture tube so there will be a culture tube will be there so here you can be able to see containing a sterile ampule of medium and a paper strip so there will be a medium along with the medium there will be a paper strip and this paper strip will be covered by a mic microorganism called geobacillus stereothermophilus which is a heat resistance bacteria okay so after autoclaving what they will be doing means the ampule will be taken taken out and it will be breaking then aseptically and this ampule which consists of this particular bacteria will be cultured for several days okay so if the test bacterium does not grow in the medium means the sterilization run is successful okay so this is how biological indicators are playing a highest and important role during the process of sterilization okay so here you can be able to see if the culture medium is pure means you can be able to see there is no change in color, color okay whereas if the culture medium is contaminated means the color will be changing from purple to yellow so the change in color and turbidity indicates growth okay it should be found that uh, 
it should be found on an autoclave control okay so the next thing is with regarding to another methods is like sometimes the special tape the spell of the word sterile will be used or it's called this paper indicator strip which will be changes the color upon sufficient heating is autoclave with a load of material like if the word sterile appears on the tape means or if there is any change in color of tape means after autoclave means the material is supposed to be sterile so there will be paper the paper there will be a word sterile will be written if the autoclave is successful and if the material is 100 percent sterilized means then the word sterile will be observed if the material has been contaminated means then the word will not be observed the next method is pasteurization so what does mean by pasteurization pasteurization involves heating liquids like milk at a high temperature for a short amount of time that is they will be heating at 72 degrees celsius for 15 seconds so this was given by louis pasteur so the next method is with regarding to dry heat sterilization so many objects are best sterilized in the absence of heat by a process called dry heat sterilization so moist heat sterilization is carried in the saturated stream under pressure in autoclave and this dry heat sterilization is carried in a hot air oven which generally maintains a temperature of 160 to 170 degrees celsius for two to three hours and the microbial death or a process of mechanism of dry heat sterilization is that microbial death occur as a result of oxidation of cellular constituent and denaturation of protein but dry heat sterilization is less effective when compared with moist heat because when the spores of clostridium botulinum that causes botulinum are killed uh, the, this particular bacteria generally killed by 5 minutes at 121 degrees celsius by moist heat sterilization whereas the same bacteria is killed only after 2 hours at 160 degrees celsius with dry heat so that's why this dry heat sterilization are less effective when compared with moist heat so that advantages of dry heat sterilization include it does not corrode your glass or metal equipment and it can be used for sterilizing powders and oil so most of the laboratories like glass or pipette will be sterilized by using this dry heat the disadvantages is that the process is very slow and it is not suitable for heat sensitive matter like plastic and rubber item next method is with regarding to low temperature sterilization method so freezing item at minus 20 degrees Celsius or lower than minus 20 degrees Celsius generally stops the microbial growth because of the low temperature and also absence of liquid water. So some microorganisms will be killed by the process of freezing either by ice crystal disruption of the cellular membrane. So freezing is a good method when you are employing a long term storage like many laboratories will be having a freezer at minus 30 and minus 70 degrees Celsius. Okay and also most of the pathogens are mesophilic and does not grow well at temperature around 4 degrees Celsius. Next is regarding to refrigeration. So Refrigeration is a method you can employ when you are going for this short term storage of your food material and refrigerated item may be generally ruined by the growth of psychrophilic and psychotrophic microorganism. So the next method is filtration. So filtration is an excellent way in order to reducing the microbial population in a solution of heat sensitive method. Okay, so some heat sensitive material can be sterilized by a process called filtration. Okay, and also this filtration is generally applied to sterilize solution. So the two kind of filters are used. One is depth filter. This depth filter consists of fibrous or granular material that have been bonded in a thick layer filled with a twisting cha channel of smaller diameter. Next particular filtration employed membrane filter. Okay, these membrane filters are generally circular filter and they have many porous membrane and the thickness of this membrane uh, membrane filter is 0.1 millimeter and this membrane filter are made up of cellulose acetate or cellulose nitrate or polycarbonate or polyvinyl fluoride or any other synthetic material. Some membranes are with a pore size of 0.2 micrometer and this particular membrane filters are generally used to remove vegetative cells but at this particular size is not employed to remove viruses from the solution ranging from 1 1 ml to many liters so we can employ membrane filters of solution ranging from 1 liter 1 milliliter to many liters okay so gas can also sterilize by a process of filtration so you have here about laminar flow biological safety cabinet which will be employing a special equipment called HEPA that is high efficiency particulate air filter so please understand the oh, full form of this particular HEPA which is a type of depth filter and it removes a microorganism to 99.7 percentage and the size of microorganism is that it can remove 0.3 milliliter particles so next is radiation so first is called uv radiation which is a kind of non-ionizing radiation so uv at a range of 260 nanometer is quite lethal but this uv radiation cannot able to penetrate into glass or inner substances very effectively so sometimes this uv lamp you can able to find in a ceilings of room or in a biological safety cabinet or even in a laminar hoop which will be generally employed to sterilize air or any exposed surface so commercially this uv units are available for water treatment and also pathogens and other microorganisms that are present in water will be destroyed when a thin layer of water is passed under this uv lamp so the next method of radiation is your ionizing radiation so ionizing radiation is a best sterilizing agent and it also, pen also penetrates deep into the object so this ionizing radi radiation generally destroys bacterial endospore vegetative cells both prokaryotic vegetative cells and eukaryotic vegetative cells but this ionizing radiation are not very effective against virus
So gamma radiation is another radiation of ionizing radiation. So gamma radiation from cobalt-60 source is generally used in cold sterilization of antibiotic hormones, suture and plastic disposable items like syringes. So syringes are not sterilized by a process for gamma radiation. This gamma radiation is also used to sterilize and pasteurize the meat. So irradiation is the best method to eliminate the threat of pathogens like E. coli, O, O157, OH7, Staphylococcus aureus and Campylobacter jejuni. So the next method is the chemical method of sterilization. So first method is with regarding to phenol. It was abroad and employed first by Joseph Lister. So phenol was first widely used antiseptic as well as it is used as a disinfectant. So phenol derivative like resols, xylenols, orthophenyl phenyl phenol. So these are the derivatives of phenol that are used as a disinfectants. And commercial disinfectants is the lysol, which is also a mixture of phenolics. So the mechanism of action of phenolics is that it generally denature the protein at the same time it disturbs the cellular membrane. So generally phenolics are considered as a tuberculosidal which destroys the tuberculosis causing uh, bacteria and it is also effective in the presence of organic material like it can it has a capacity to kill microorganisms which are forming a biofilm. Next another uh, derivative of phenol is hexachlorophene. Uh, so it is a most commonly employed antiseptic but at the same time this particular phenolic derivative can cause brain damage. Still this hexaphenol is being used in hospital because when there is a staphylococcal outbreak the nurses in the hospital will be employing this particular chemical to stop them. So the next method, next chemical is alcohol. So alcohol is also using as a disinfectant. At the same time, alcohol is employed as a aseptic. So this alcohol are bactericidal as well as fungicidal, but they are not sporicidal. This alcohol has an effect on some lipid containing virus is also being destroyed by the action of this alcohol. So the most popular alcohol germicide are ethanol and isopropanol and both are generally used at a concentration of 70% or 80%. And the mechanism of action of this alcohol is that they act by denaturing the protein and also they dissolve the membrane lipid. So cell cannot able to survive and finally microbial death occur. So the next chemical is iodine. So iodine is generally employed. So this is coming under a halogen. So halogen among halogen, iodine and chlorine are generally employed as an antimicrobial agent or microbial control agent. So iodine is employed as a skin, skin antiseptic and the mode of mechanism of action of iodine is that they kill the cell by oxidizing the cellular constituent and also they iodinate few cellular protein. So at high concentration, iodine can able to kill spores. Okay, and iodine is generally employed as a tincture of iodine at 2 percentage of concentration, whereas more than 2 percentage of concentration, iodine is employed as a water ethanol solution of potassium iodide. Okay, so more concentration means it generally employed as a water ethanol solution of potassium iodide and tincture for tincture of iodine, 2 percentage of iodine is used. And in more recently, iodine has been complex with an organic carrier molecule in order to form a compound called iodophore. This, this iodophore is water soluble, they are stable and they are non-staining. And another disadvantage is it's that another advantage itself, they release the iodine slowly in order to minimize skin burn and also to prevent the irritation. So the popular brands of iodine include Vescondine for skin and laboratory disinfection and beta dyne for wound. So these are iodine based antimicrobial agent. So the next method is with regarding to chlorine. So chlorine is employed as a disinfectant in, in municipal water supplies and all they are using chlorine and also swimming pools and all they are using chlorine as a disinfectant and also in household. So it is generally applied either as a chlorine gas or as a sodium hypochlorite that is bleach or calcium hypochlorite. All of this particular component of chlorine will be releasing a hyperchlorous acid and oxygen. Okay, so the mechanism of uh, chlorine mechanism is that it will oxidize the cellular material and chlorine is highly efficient against vegetative bacteria and vegetative fungus but chlorine is not efficient against spores. One potential problem is that chlorine will be reacting with the organic compound and be forming a carcinogenic compound called trihalomethane. Okay, so while, mon while drinking water, they will be monitoring the presence of this particular carcinogenic chemical. Okay, so small quantity of drinking water can be disinfected by using a halogen, which is a chlorine derivative. The formula is that parasulfone dichloroaminobenzoic acid. So it will be a tablet. So for those who are going for camping and all, they will be taking a, uh, this particular halogen tablet. Okay, so the main advantage or uniqueness about this halogen uh, chemical or tablet is that it will be releasing the chlorine when added to water and at the same time they will be disinfecting the water with the presence of 30 minutes. So generally this particular halogen tablets are taken by the camper. Next is the heavy metal which is also an another class of uh, microbial agent or antimicrobial agent. So ions of heavy metal like mercury, silver, arsenic, zinc and copper are widely used as a germicide. It is killing germ. Heavy metals are generally bacteriostatic rather than bacteriocidal.
Okay, so bacteriostatic means they can able to remove the microorganism, but they cannot able to kill the microorganism. So side is a suffix that is used for killing and status is a suffix that is used for removing. So in hospital, they are using a 1% solution of silver nitrate and this particular silver nitrate is not used as an antimicrobial agent, but it is used to prevent an ophthalmologic gonorrhea. So gonorrhea is a which is again caused by the bacteria. So for that purposes, they are using the silver nitrate. Next, silver sulfur diacin is used on burns and copper sulfate is used as a effective algae side that if a lake or a swimming pool is infected by algae, uh, algae then copper sulfate is generally employed and the mechanism of this particular heavy metal is that they will be combining with the protein generally this heavy metal will be combining with the sulfur hydrogel group and they will be inactivating them the other method is that they also precipitate the cellular protein so the next is a quaternary ammonium compound. So this quaternary ammonium compound or cationic detergent. At the same time, they are used as an antimicrobial and also effective disinfectant. So the antimicrobial activity of this particular quaternary amino complex with the ability, they will be disrupting the microbial membrane. At the same time, they will be denaturing the protein. So uh, one example like benzyl cream chloride and cetyl pyridine chloride are the two quaternary amino compounds that generally kill most of the bacteria, but both the compound does not capacity to kill either mycobacterium tuberculosis as well as endospore. So yeah, they are not effective against these to microorganism and the next thing is that this quaternary ammonium complex are having a good advantages like they are stable and non-toxic but another disadvantage itself this quaternary ammonium complex are generally inactivated by hard uh, water and soap so commercial available includes zephyrin which contain a benzalkonium chloride and this particular zephyrin which contain a cetylpyridium chloride or a brand or compound which are available in the market so the next thing is regarding to aldehyde. So two examples are formaldehyde and glutaldehyde. Both are highly reactive compounds. They generally react either with nucleic acid or protein and they inactivate both the protein and nucleic acid by forming a cross-linking. At the same time, they will be alkylating the protein. So this alkaloids, al aldehydes are sporocidal which have an effect on endospore. They will be killing a spore and they are used as a chemical sterilite. Okay. And this formaldehyde is usually dissolved either in water or alcohol. Okay. And next is regarding to glutaldehyde. Glutaldehyde is used as a 2% as a buffered solution and it is an effective disinfectant and this glutaldehyde is a less effective than formaldehyde so that's why this glutaldehyde is employed in hospitals and laboratory equipment so this glutaldehyde generally disinfects object within 10 minutes but uh, um, but may require as long as 12 hours to destroy spore okay so in order to destroy spore then glutaldehyde treatment is required for 12 hours next thing is regarding to gases so first gas is ethylene oxide so many heat sensitive items like disposable petri dishes syringes heart lung machine uh, scutures catheters are generally sterilized by using this particular ethylene oxide gas ethylene oxide is both microbicidal as well as sporicidal and the mechanism of action is that they will be a uh, combining with this particular compound will form a complex with protein okay so this sterilization method is generally carried out by a ethylene oxide sterilization which is very much similar to your autoclave uh, so this particular sterilization has a capacity to control concentration of ethylene oxide and temperature and humidity okay so one disadvantages of this ethylene oxide is that it is highly exposed explosive but by mixing it with the inert gases like carbon dioxide and nitrogen its explosive tendency will be eliminated okay and next thing is that it is this particular ethylene oxide gas is not suitable for fumigation due to its explosive uh, explosive nature it cannot able to the use for fumigation process next is that extensive aeration of sterilized material is necessary okay so once you sterilization you need to leave the material for open to air because ethylene, ethylene oxide is highly toxic so the next gas is beta propionolactone so in its liquid form liquid form it is used to sterilize both vaccines and sera so vaccines and sera are sterilized by gases and the gas which is used is beta propionolactone and this particular beta propionyl is decomposes in active form after several loss and therefore so it is easy to eliminate this beta propionyl gas whereas it is not easy to eliminate your ethylene oxide gas okay and it also destroys microorganism more readily than ethylene oxide but one disadvantages or two disadvantages that does not penetrate well on the material at the same time this bpl is high carcinogenic the last gas is hydrogen peroxide so vaporized form of hydrogen peroxide is used to decontaminate your biological safety cabinet operating room and large facilities so this hydrogen peroxide is toxic and it kills variety of microorganism so during the course of the decontam decontamination process this hydrogen peroxide will be converted into water that is h2o plus it will be broken down into oxygen so both the water and both the oxygen are harmless so you can use this hydrogen peroxide for decontaminating any surfaces another advantage is that these system can you that or that they can be used at a wide range of temperature that is you can temperature you can use at a temperature from 4 to 80 degree celsius if you you can use for refrigerator or whatever the process so minus 80 degree celsius you can use and the next thing is that they will not damage most of the material okay another disadvantages of using chemical based method is that one example the resistant form 
So one example is that triclosan is an antimicrobial agent that is found in a deodorant, mouthwash, soaps, cutting board and baby toys. But there is an, unfortunately, there is an emergence of triclosan resistant bacteria that is Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a resistant bacteria. What they will be do? They will be actively pumping out this particular triclosan. So, so the, the, the development of resistant form of bacteria is a high disadvantage while employing a chemical method of control. So here I had given you a list of classes of the chemicals at the same time they are said So have a look on this particular chemical when you are going for your examination. So the last how they are evaluating this antimicrobial agent means the best known disinfecting screening test is called phenol coefficient test. So in which the potency of any disinfectant say you can be able to employ quaternary amino compound or alcohol whatever the potency can be analyzed by comparing that with the potency of phenol. Okay. So what they will be doing they will be doing a serial dilution of phenol and disinfectant and then they will be employing a two microorganism. So they will be adding a salmonella typhi and staphylococcus aureus then they will be analyzing or then they will be effectively analyzing the antimicrobial potential of a particular compound okay so i hope this particular video will be really helpful if you, if you like this video please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you friends thanks for watching this video